for the journey ahead. Amen. So I want to talk about this morning, a change is coming. Mm -hmm. If you have your Bible for, Bibles for our ground scripture, go ahead and turn to 2 Peter chapter 2. If you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 8. 2 Peter. Go ahead and turn there. A change is coming. Second Peter chapter two. Start in verse eight. Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three. Start at verse eight. I want to show you that a change is coming. So we won't talk about it today. Second Peter chapter two, chapter three, verse eight. Something going on in chapter two. I keep saying chapter two. <laughs> I'm about to research that when I get home. <laughs> I'm looking at chapter three, but the Spirit keeps saying chapter two. I said, look, maybe if God got something in there for next week. But Second Peter chapter three, verse eight. Let's read that. It said, "But beloved." Be not ignorant of the one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us who not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Look what he says. Change will come, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth and also the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth the righteousness. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot. And blameless. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. Peter is writing right here and saying that the Lord will come. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And everything that we see today will be dissolved by fire. God is going to destroy it by fire. A change is coming. And so he's trying to admonish us and warn us that when God come, he will find peace in us. So we need to make sure that when the Lord returns, that he find us in good standing when he returns. Because a change is coming. How do we know that a change is coming? Look what he says. That the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Yes. And you hear people talking about the world going to be destroyed by fire. It's true. We're not focusing on the world being destroyed. I want to focus more on us being ready when he returns. Yes. No matter how it destroyed, it destroyed the first earth with water. Mm -hmm. And just like the people of Noah days, they weren't prepared. Mm -hmm. And Noah was telling them that it was going to rain. Mm -hmm. And just like the preachers all over the world today are telling you, basically, just get right. It don't matter what you've done, what you're doing, just get right before he returns. Right. So a change is coming. Believers. Believers, now is the time mm -hmm. to be encouraged mm -hmm. and to continue to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Things won't always be 
under the current system. The system as we know it, things won't always be that way. This system we in right now is an evil system. It's a corrupt system. It was not what God intended for the world to be in the beginning. So we're operating now under the system of evil and the system of the curse. Believers, now is the time to be encouraged and to continue to serve the Lord because things won't always operate under this current system, this evil system. God will destroy this earth one day with fire and a new system will replace this current system. God will destroy this earth one day with fire and a new system will replace this current system. Just like some people were in the days of Noah swept away because they did not believe that a change was coming. Noah warned them, but they did not take heed. And Jesus said in the New Testament, when he returns, people are going to be, still be getting married, giving in the marriage, working, living, eating, drinking, partying. He's not against partying. He's against you partying and not being prepared for when he comes. That's right. Because if all you're doing is partying, your life is here was just a waste. Right. If you never make preparation to go be with the Lord, then you just wasted all the time God gave you on earth. And your life was a blessing from God. You should benefit from it. Because God don't want you to have a good time now and not later. Jesus said he go to prepare a place for us. So he's not against us. We're not trying to make it like being a Christian is boring. You can enjoy your life. Party, right. travel, whatever you like to do. Like Mark Zilla used to say, golf, eating, whatever you like to do. Do it. But remember the Lord in your all that you do. And be prepared for the day when the Lord will come. Just like in the days of Noah, the people were swept away by the flood. Because it had never rained before and they thought Noah was crazy. Well, because things are going the way it's going in this world. People are living a blessed life, a prosperous life. They don't think that it can end one day. It will end one day because the Bible forewarns us. He says right here that he's going to come like a thief in the night. And everything's going to be dissolved by fire. And just like the days of Noah, the people were swept away. They didn't believe until it started to rain. And you got some people that's not going to believe until Christ returns. But at that moment, it'll be too late. Many people today will be left behind and destroyed because they refuse to make the necessary all it is is adjustment. They refuse to make the necessary adjustment in their life to receive God's free gift of salvation. All you gotta just make an adjustment. That's all you gotta do. We just read in Peter that the Lord will return as a thief in the night. And the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth and also the works that are in it shall be burned up. Everything will be burned up. That beautiful car you have, that house, all the fancy shoes, clothes, your cologne, your good old barbecue pit, your tractor, your credit cards, your bank account, your banker, your bank, everything will be burned up with a forever heat. That's right. So we it's just to, these things that God has blessed us with is just to enjoy right now. It's just one job. But all these things will pass away because we're gonna be under the new system. But a lot of people don't believe that change is coming. And we see changes coming because Jesus forewarns us and told us what things to look for to know that the end is almost near. He said children will be the cause of their parents' death. Yeah. Yeah. People won't have no natural affection. The love of many will wax cold. Right. Truth breakers. Right. Uh, quick to shed blood. You see that? Quick to, you can't even toot your horn no more at nobody. You toot your horn. That may be your last toot. That's right. That's right. Quick to shed blood. Despise of those that do good. You go and do good and people hate you because you do yeah. something positive. Yes. People say they would despise you when you do something good. You do something good and people get mad because you did something good. Despise of those that do good. High-minded, proud, boasters, braggers. We see all that right now. 
spread the uh, falling away from serving God, going to church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All these things you see. Yes. Uh, Christ sightings. Yes. People saying they see Jesus on a mirror, <laughs> in a cooking pan, mm -hmm. on a garbage can top. Mm -hmm. See Jesus everywhere but in their heart. Mm -hmm. He said, but don't go. Because many false Christ going to rise before I come back. He said, but don't go. They're going to say he over here, he over there. But don't go. You see all these things happening right now. People will follow false teachers instead of the true teachers. You see all these things. Love having other gods before God. Huh? Having other gods before God. Worshiping and bowing down to him. Huh? All these things you see taking place, mm -hmm. we know that the end is near. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Turn with me to First Thessalonians chapter four. I want to give you another supporting scripture to show you that Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians chapter four. Change is coming. A change mm -hmm. is coming. Mm -hmm. Look to your neighbor. Say he's not gonna hold you real long. I just want to show you that a change. Y'all know a change coming. Oh, yeah. That's why you got to stay ready. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. I got to go home and read 2 Peter chapter 2 tonight. Tonight. Mm -hmm. But my heart kept saying chapter 2. I'm trying to say chapter 3. Uh -huh. I gotta, I'm going to find out when I get home tonight. Uh -huh. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. When you finally say bless his name. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 look what he says First Thessalonians 4 16 it says for the Lord himself shall descend from what? Heaven, Heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. First Thessalonians 4 16. It says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, if you're alive when this happened, this was going to happen and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord forevermore. Yes. Some script, another scripture say, with a twinkling of an eye, we should yes. be changed. Mm -hmm. So we see that change is coming. We're going to be caught up in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. A change is coming. Many people will be left behind and destroyed because they refuse to make the necessary judgment in their life. To receive God's free gift of salvation. How can I seek God now? Don't turn up. But Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Now is the time to start seeking God. That's right. Amen. I know a lot of people don't believe that the world and God are real. Mm -hmm. But that's why God designed it that way for you to operate on faith. Not by what you see. We operate on by faith. I've never seen God. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time. But he wants you to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. Mm -hmm. See, to be saved is the work of God, not of man. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, it's going to require you to have faith in what God said. Mm -hmm. Even though you wasn't around when he created none of this, you wasn't around when he done none of his work, but it's going to require faith. And your faith Plus what he provided for us is what's going to save. For by grace are you saved through faith. Mm -hmm. And that not of yourself is a gift of God by the works. At least any man should boast. It requires faith. Because the gospel story begins with a virgin having a baby. Mm -hmm. And how can a woman be pregnant and still a virgin at the same time? Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Ghost overshadowed her. And put that baby Jesus in her womb. So she was a virgin and she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. That's going to weed out a lot of people right there because they ain't going to believe that story because it don't make sense. If you're a virgin, how can you be pregnant? Mm -hmm. That's right. 
Because God said it. There's a lot of things that happen that is going to require your faith. The Bible said you had a power and ability. Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he said he'll do it. But a lot of times we don't experience God blesses and miraculous healings or nothing in our life because we don't really think that God can do it, so we never do it. If he said anything, you ask the Father in my name, I'll do it. Then why are we having the things we desire in our heart? Because we don't believe. We Even though we speak it with our mouth, that doesn't necessarily mean that we believe it in our heart. You ever said something like this? I ain't scared. And you was really scared. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody asks you, you go to company house because you don't know the people over there, and you feel kind of shame. Say, do you want to eat? And you say, no, nah, I'm not home. And your stomach making noises. Yes. Yes. See, because you don't fool God when you say it with your mouth. God looks at your heart. Mm, that's right. Huh? People say, I ain't lonely, yeah, but you're lonely. Yes. You say, I'm happy, but you're not happy. Yes. Just because you're smiling don't make you happy. Yes. Hmm? Yes. And, and Jesus said, these people honor me with their mouth, mm -hmm. but their heart is far from me. Uh -huh. That's right. So we can have those things that we believe if we have faith. That's right. Believers, listen. Look to your neighbor, say for the clothes. Bro, Taylor got to sleep. <laughs> See, I care about the sheep. <laughs> I'm on that house of prayer. See, your pastor, his pastor, that man works hard. I got to hurry up and close. <laughs> See, you're going to get to this is real deal right here. I got the clothes. Right. <laughs> got to go home and get up some rest. Right. It's real church here. Right. Huh? I can extend this service anytime. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, my, my good member, Brother Taylor, I got the clothes. You two, we got to go and sleep. <laughs> That's right. I love my members. That's real Amen. preaching now, huh? See, so God don't care about God. Look at your heart. You got some people that can stay all day, and when church get out of go right back do wrong. So which one you think God is pleased with? The one that do right. Watch this. Believe it. We should not be getting ready for Christ to return. You shouldn't be getting ready for Christ to return. You should be already ready. That's why I'm in the clouds. We should not be getting ready. If you get ready, you're gonna be late. Yes. You don't want to pick somebody up and you pull up, you tell them, be ready at seven, at seven o'clock, you outside blowing, and they tell all the tell you, I'm coming, you ain't ready. I'm gone. Oh. I told you to be ready at seven. And when I got there, you still getting ready. And a lot of people gonna get caught like that when Christ returns. And I'm gonna show you the scripture. You're gonna show you the scripture where it says you need to be ready. Believers should not be getting ready for the second coming of Christ. We should be ready already. Matthew 24, verse 44. Matthew 24, 44. I'm ready right now. I got to make sure I stay ready. Stay ready. Yes. Matthew 24, 44. When you find it, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A change is coming. You need to be ready. Mm -hmm. Not getting ready. Have getting right. ready means you ain't ready. Right. If you're still getting ready, you're not ready. Right. Look what he says. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this is Jesus talking. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man coming. Mm -hmm. You need to already be ready. That's true. Oh, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. You ain't ready. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's why when they're doing shows like the BET Awards and all these shows, they got a spotlight. They got a time frame to get that show. Yes. And that's why when them, them singers behind us say, they say, you going on in 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Come on the stage. You can't be late. Because they're on the time frame. 
But hold up, I'm gonna stop getting my mic. I gotta get my shoe, get my shoe back there. Hold on, nothing but love for you, baby. They sing it, come on. Uh-huh. You behind stage, they done started. Uh-huh. Come on, we need to be ready. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Let me get another scripture to support that. Titus, Titus. Mm-hmm. Timothy, Titus, go to Titus 2. Mm-hmm. Titus chapter 2. Mm-hmm. When they tell you the Come out on stage. You gotta come out on stage. The show began. Right after Timothy. Titus chapter 2. Timothy Titus. Titus chapter 2. Titus 2 12. Titus, Timothy is right, it's right after Timothy. Titus 2 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. When you find it, say, Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Titus 2, 12. Look what it says. It says, Teaching us deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live. This is how you should be living already. Watch this, Titus 2.12. Showing that I'm not making this up. You should be ready, not get ready. Titus 2.12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live what? Soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Don't wait till the new world comes. You should be living like that right now. Look what it says. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem, re- repurchase us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You should be denying ungodliness and worldly lust and living soberly in this present world. That's how you ought to be living right now, which means you're in a state of readiness. Uh-huh. I'm closing. The new system will be about God and his people only. Uh-huh. This new system will be about God and his people only. The new heaven and the new earth, God's kingdom will not be prevented from operating at its highest level, and death and evil will be cast aside out of this new system. The new system is going to be about God and his people. He said, I'm going to wipe all the tears away from their eyes. Amen. Let's look at Revelation 21. Last book in the Bible. Revelation 21, verse 1 through 4. Hmm. And then we close it. Revelation, I just want to show you. Change is coming, so stay encouraged. Stay ready. Mm-hmm. Live every day like it's yours. I told y'all last week, there's never time for you to let go and get down. I hope when you get down, he don't show up. Because <laughs> it'll be too late. Revelation 21, verse 1 through 4. Look what it says. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was what? Passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Ooh, that city gonna be so pretty. Yeah. Just like you waiting on that woman to come down that aisle, you finna marry. She's standing all pretty. She coming towards you, you know she's gonna be yours. That's what he said. And when you look at this new Jerusalem, this holy city, you know that's gonna be your new habitat. Wow. Look what he said. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their what? God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things will pass away. No more migraines. No more sinus, high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, none of that. For the former things, the world you know now how it's operating will be no more. 
A change is coming. Yes. If you can just hold on to the by and by. Yes. And stay ready. Not getting ready. Stay ready. All is going to pay off after a while. It don't seem like much now. But it's going to pay off after a while. You got to encourage other believers to stay ready and be ready for when the Lord returns. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. A change is coming. A change 